Hey, how's it going? It's Day. I'm making a little bit different video than I normally make. I'm not going to be taking you step by step. I'm just going to be kind of explaining what you need to do to make something happen. And in this case, I've been experimenting with trying to make a fireball. And it's not that difficult. It just involves some experimentation and playing around. The one video that you're going to need to watch to do this is this one I made on called Making Fire in Lightwave. And you can go to this website, lightwaveserver808.net. There's a bunch of videos on there, but it's also here on uh, YouTube. So you'll have to unfortunately suffer through watching this video to see the settings that I make. Because to make the fireball, basically all we're going to do is turn this on its side. I mean, just change the direction and then animate the fireball. So if I come into Lightwave, I have the emitter here and all I've really done, if I go into properties, oh, not on the light, on the emitter, if you come in here to effects and you come to emitter, you'll see all I've really done is just changed the direction of the, you know, cause it's going to be a fireball and then you animate going across the screen. So this is what you end up with is something like this. You just do that. <laughs> So that's why I'm not showing you step by step because it's pretty pretty simple to do. Animate an emitter going across this the screen. The one thing I will tell you it, to make it more, let me stop it right there, to make it more fireball-ish is if you go into properties on the emitter. Where is that? Here it is. If you go into properties on the emitter under motion, you can play around with the velocity, but the explosion is what's going to make it kind of spread out toward the back. So that gives it more of that uh, kind of V shape that you'd expect from a fireball. Adjusting the explosion, my settings on here, I, I increase the birth rate. What you're going to find is that as it emits, it emits spheres. And so you, what you have to do is play around with the settings until it's less spherish. It all kind of blends together. So I actually changed it to a box just to get away from that spherical shape that I saw. Just by playing around with the, the generator size, the birth rate, lifetime, you just have to play around to see what you like. But it's basically just you create an emitter, boom, you've got your fire. And then what you do is you just follow on that uh, tutorial of the making fire. It's flying across the screen. What I kind of ended up with after playing around with this for a while, let's see, where are my pictures right here? The one thing I wanted to talk about was playing Minecraft the other day and I noticed they had this pixel fire. And it's actually, if you can kind of get your mind around how they're creating this, like this is all animated on the Y axis, but you can see as the pixels go up in time, you know, they're changing on the dimensions that you'll see in that fire tutorial. So you'll notice that they're, the colors are alternating. They're kind of brighter here and a darker orange here and then they start lightening up and then they and then they start becoming less opaque and the opacity increases or decreases I guess so that it's more transparent and so if you study pixelated fire you basically get the idea of how you're creating fire in light wave using gradients fire tutorial that I already did kind of goes over all the settings that you really need to know if I click along here this is kind of one of the fireballs um, that I was experimenting with. This is another animation that I did just in the very beginning. It didn't really turn out that great. And here's the one that I got the, the closest to working with that I thought looked fairly realistic. And of course, I just have a sphere here, but you can make this sphere bigger, put it in here and play around with the colors of it. And so that would be like more of a lead fireball. And of course, as it's going across the screen, it would go pretty fast. So people might not be attending to all the little details in it, but this is with a white background, you can see it looks more smoky on the tail end. Whereas when you're looking at it here on the black screen, you don't really appreciate that part. So it's a little misleading when you just look at the, the fire against a black backdrop versus if you're looking at the fire against the white backdrop. But I think it's a pretty cool effect and I think it, it'll look pretty realistic when I'm done. What I'm planning to do is create a scene where you're we're following this fireball through space and it's flying through and destroying buildings. So <laughs> that's my ultimate goal is that I'm working for it. But getting this part down was what I was playing around with the most. So it's pretty straightforward. You just follow the uh, tutorial that I already made on how to make fire, the actual hypervoxels look like this. And then you just animate a sphere with an emitter. Now there's another tip or trick that you can do. And if you come into uh, add effects under the emitter, 
properties and you can add wind to this so that's what i did and it really creates a really more interesting effect so this really if we switch into vpr here maybe you can get a better look at it well what you have to do i forgot to tell you if you click on wind here you can play around with these settings they're all pretty straightforward but you have to hit this calculate button to get the effect to apply and so I didn't realize that and I was kind of like, what's wrong with it? <laughs> there was nothing wrong with it. It's just, I didn't get the effect to apply. So you can see it'll make, it'll actually create a more, I think a more realistic fireball. So like if I go here into backdrop and I turn on the gradients, you can see what you're missing on the, against the black background what you'd kind of expect to see. So you can add the wind effect and attach it to the emitter and then it will create an even more dynamic effect. So like if we, I don't know if we go to heavy wind and let's see what that does. I'll hit calculate. I think it really kind of smushes it down the whole thing, but you have to let it calculate is the trick. So go ahead and create a sphere, make the fire, follow the fire. See, look at this, see, that's a little more crazy, right? but it, it might get you a more fireballish, <laughs> a more fireballish looking effect. And I think it does, as the wind interacts with this, it gets rid of that spherical particles that you can sometimes see. But when you play around with the settings, you can smush everything together. And like I did in the other tutorial on the fire, if you come into backdrop and you go into legacy and hypervoxels, one of the key settings here was that I ended up realizing how the big effect was. One was the lighting in the scene, but the other thing was the thickness. That really had a huge effect on the, I thought on the, how cool the, the fire actually looked. So thickness actually turns out to be kind of a big deal. Cause if you turn it up high, you get something like that and you turn it down lower and it starts looking really a lot more believable. Those are just some ideas to play around with. I didn't see a reason to walk you through the whole everything all over again. So I just kind of wanted to make a few comments about it, what you can do to create a fireball. Okay, so that's all I had. I should mention that I'm gonna be shifting away for a little while uh, from making light wave tutorials and I'm gonna be doing fusion because I'm gonna be taking a lot of what I'm doing in light wave and I'm gonna be moving into fusion. And the reason I recommend using fusion is, is that it's free for one, but also the studio version is only $299. So that's a pretty good deal. And it also has motion and camera tracking in it. So, which I understand with every version of the software is getting better. So if you're a light wave artist, fusion is a natural compositing program to go toward. So anyway, take care, have a great day, and I will talk to you next time.